folks, Rain of Galen here, and welcome to another episode of Rain Makes Stuff. I don't know about you, but I am super excited about the new Mario movie that's going to be coming out in a few months. I'm so excited. And in premature celebration of what should hopefully be better than the previous Mario movie a few decades ago, I hope you're right. I decided to take a make request from viewer Slim Guy to make something from the recent Mario movie trailers. Now, I wasn't sure exactly what to make getting started, so I went back and rewatched the trailers a few times, and I ended up pausing on pure gold. Attack! <laughs> Oh, that's the one right there. So without any further ado, let's get crafting. I'll start out by setting myself up for a rough time by using clothing hangers yet again as my armature material, which I'll bulk out with foil before finally adding Sculpey Original Clay small amounts at a time. For this sculpture, I wisely chose to use beads as the eyes so I didn't have to make perfectly round eyeballs. However, this will come back to haunt me because I only have plastic beads, which melt. And this clay has to be baked. So yeah. I want the penguins to have some texture, so I'll press a piece of paper towel to their bodies and use a piece of cloth and a sculpting tool to add texture to the king penguin's cape. When you weren't looking, I rolled two tiny strings of clay together and I'm now adding that as the edging on his fur collar. By the way, all the materials I'm using can be found in the description below. Once the king is baked, we'll use some Sculpey glue to add the fur lining on his cape and use our texture tool to make it look furry. As I worked on the king's fluffy fur frock, I stumbled upon a horrific sight. Apparently, I spent all my money on art supplies again and forgot to buy coffee. Luckily, you can help. Click the link in the upper right if you'd like to donate a coffee. In actuality, your generosity supports this channel by helping to fund materials needed for these videos. After spending about an hour putting what was probably more detail than necessary into the fur, it was time to figure out how to make the king look like a real king. I'm going low budget and low effort on the crown by making it out of some yellow cardstock I had lying around. I'm not aiming for perfection here, just a nice base that we can cover up with some other materials. Once we get the basic shape cut out, we can then tape it into a circle and try it on for size. I found a soda box in the recycle bin, which should be perfect thickness for the bands around the base of the crown. Then I'll top off the points with these small beads and a few dabs of super glue. And I think our king penguin is ready for paint. Now I'll move on to my favorite part of this sculpture, which I'll lovingly name Crazy Eyes. Building the other two penguins beside the king will follow roughly the same approach. Eye socket stabbing, bead using, and eventual melting of said beads. By the way, I couldn't help but notice we're getting awfully close to 2,000 subscribers. Wow. So a big thank you to all my lovely subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing that now. And while you're there, you can help other folks find this video by giving it a like. Now let's finish up our little penguin friend by making him more penguin-like with a little feather flip and tail, as well as some texture, before giving him a quick wash with some isopropyl alcohol to smooth him out and remove any fingerprints before baking. Finally, we'll add his belts, made from strips and bits of thinly rolled clay. I'll save the scarf for later, since I'll need to make two of them, and instead move on to our third and final penguin. After giving him a distinctly Ninja Turtle-shaped head, I'll once again add some beads for eyes, this time getting smarter and using glass beads so they don't melt. Otherwise, apart from his more subdued expression and closed mouth, sculpting this penguin is much like sculpting the other two, beginning with adding and manipulating the clay as needed for his beak, his feet, and eventually his arms. Because these sculptures are so small, I don't need to add armature wire for the arms and can simply stick rolls of clay to the sides of the body. Once we add the texture and the details like his belt, wristband, and buttons, we're ready to bake him and move on to the bandanas for both of the smaller penguins, which I'll make by rolling and cutting triangles from super thin pieces of clay, then adding some tiny rolls of clay for the folds. Rinse repeat for crazy eyes and the penguin sculpting is complete. Now that all the sculpting's done, it's time to drop the base. 
I've wanted to try out XPS foam for a while now, especially after watching numerous crafters like North of the Border and Nerd Forge make some pretty sweet dioramas. So I thought I'd start small with a very simple ice and snow base, since I want the penguins to be the focus of this sculpture. Since this is my first time using XPS foam, I stole this technique of smashing rocks into the foam from North of the Border, and I must say I'm thrilled with the effect. Once my base is carved and texturized, I'll glue on the penguins. I probably should have painted them before securing them to the base, but why make life easy when it can be difficult? Before I can get to my favorite part of the project, I'll have to prime the whole statue. Here I'm using a combination of Mod Podge and white acrylic paint. The Mod Podge helps seal the clay so it doesn't suck in as much paint, and since it's clear, I've added white paint to it because, well, snow and ice should generally be white, right? Painting with actual colors is always my favorite part, but I wasn't quite prepared for how many coats of blue it would take to get sufficient coverage on the penguins. In hindsight, it probably would have made more sense to prime in blue, but here we are. Painting in small crevices like mouths and clothing creases is always difficult for me since I don't have the steadiest hands. But that's where paint can be forgiving. You can always go over mistakes with more paint. N not that I make mistakes. I mean, do you see any? I didn't think so. Now I can bring the characters to life with some pupils. No way I can get those tiny things painted with a brush, so I'm using a pointed sculpting tool instead. And now for my favorite part. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> when painting sculptures, I like to block in the basic colors, then tie them together later with a wash. So for now, I'll just block in the basic grays and blacks that make up the penguin's clothing items. I can't tell exactly what some of the colors are for the details on the penguins, so I'll take some artistic license and use a high sheen silver acrylic paint for the king's cloak edging. For his crown, I've mixed a burnt orange for the base coat, and then I'll go over it again with several coats of a high sheen gold paint that I found on Amazon. With the first coat, I'm not too impressed, but after a few coats, it really starts to shine, so I'm fairly happy with this purchase. I also threw on a few dabs of tacky glue at the last minute for the studs on his crown. Now that all the color is blocked in, I'll do some dry brushing with a lighter color to highlight the texture and edges of the sculpture before moving on to the final painting stage, which is to bring all the colors closer together with a wash. I'm going with blue here to really bring out the colder temperature of the climate from this scene. As I wipe it away, the wash will settle into the cracks and crevices of the sculpture, as well as lay over the lighter colors, bringing everything together. Touch up with a little more dry brushing, and we're done painting. One final touch to the penguins with some UV resin to bring their eyes to life, and we'll move on to the last step. I thought I'd try something new and grind up some failed pieces of the mush lamp base from a previous make, but first I have to cut them into smaller pieces. Since I'm lazy and buy my coffee pre-ground, I decided to ruin my coffee grinder by grinding up the filament chunks. Much to my surprise, it actually produced something resembling bits of ice and snow. So, success? I'll sift it a little to separate the larger pieces that look more like ice from the smaller particles that are more snow-like. Then, after smothering a slightly watered-down Mod Podge layer onto the base, I'll sprinkle on the bigger particles to better incorporate the penguins with the base and hide any gaps between them. Last, I'll seal the snow and ice with watered down Mod Podge. I think making these penguins actually got me more excited about the movie that's going to be coming out in April. Thanks again to Slim Guy for suggesting we make something from the Mario movie trailer. And if you have something you'd like me to make, leave it in the comments below. While you're down there, please consider liking this video so other folks like you can find my video and it doesn't end up in the ether that is YouTube. 
It's gone. So thanks so much for watching, and that's it. Let's take a closer look at the finished sculpture. Thank <music> you.